Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at the Power Macintosh 6275 that was released back in 1995. That's 22 years ago. On a side note, we just reached 10,000 subscribers, so many thanks to all of you that have enjoyed watching the videos I've put out. And don't worry, there's many more to come, so stay tuned. I recently picked this machine up from the original owner that had definitely taken care of it over the years. There is some slight yellowing in a few places, but it's probably not worth fixing at this stage. It's worth noting that the 14 inch Color Plus display only outputs at a refresh rate of 67 hertz, so I can't remove that screen flicker that you see here. This particular Mac is running OS 7.5.1. Powering this machine is a 75 megahertz Motorola PowerPC 603 CPU that is soldered directly onto the logic board. Filling these slots is the 40 megabytes of 72 pin memory. The 14 inch Color Plus display I'm using here cannot output more than 640 by 480, and the only refresh rate it does is 67 hertz, which once again makes it very difficult to film. Unlike newer monitors, the Color Plus has physical dials that you have to turn to adjust the brightness, contrast, and screen position. When it comes to storage, it's got a beefy 500 megabyte IDE drive, a 4 times CD-ROM drive, and a 1.44 megabyte 3.5 inch floppy drive, all of which are accessible just by taking the front plastic bezel off. This was definitely a fairly middle of the road Power Mac for its time. I couldn't seem to find how much it originally cost anywhere. If you do know, feel free to comment below. As far as peripherals go, it came with an Apple, Apple Design Keyboard, and an Apple Desktop Bus Mouse too. After using far higher precision laser mice for years, it does take a bit of getting used to using one of these older mice. The screen this came with was originally released in 1993, a few years before the Power Mac 6200. If it wasn't for the colourful Apple logo on the front, you probably wouldn't even know it was made by Apple. When it comes to the design, you're either going to love it or hate it. Apple was a company on the decline back in 1995. Their products were definitely lacking in design innovation and blended in with other generic white computers of the time for the most part. I personally like the design of the 6200. It's really easy to open up and swap out components, and overall it's a fairly compact desktop. It's crazy to think that just six years after this was released, Apple were making desktops that look like this Power Mac G4. A lot of Apple desktops of this vintage have very brittle plastics, so I had to re-glue the CD eject and volume buttons back in place. Definitely be extra careful when handling these machines. Around the back is a fairly standard assortment of I.O. for a mid-90s Apple desktop. This includes a DB15 video output, audio in and out, as well as an ADB connector among other things. It's also convenient that the front of the Mac has a second 3.5mm audio output, so, what can you do with it? The model I have has no ethernet jack, so online connectivity is out of the question for me. There were several games installed on the hard disk and the included CD sleeve that a lot of mid-90s Apple computers came with. Lemmings is a childhood favourite of mine. You have to set the computer to 256 colour mode before starting though. If you've never played Lemmings before, the goal is to get those little green-haired Lemmings to the end of the stage. Or if you're feeling a bit masochistic, you could just blow them all up. Also installed is a game called Crystal Caliburn, a fairly decent virtual pinball game released in 1994 for Microsoft Windows and Mac OS. I think it's a pretty good game, personally. I could show you everything on here, but would be literally here all day. Overall, the 6200 runs very well for its age, and it's very zippy when moving around the operating system. Thanks so much again for watching. If you want to support what I do, all I ask is you leave a like if you've enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. I'll see you next time.